what are zoonoses these are the diseases that spread between animals and humans and they are caused by the germs bacteria viruses parasites and fungi out of these total of these human pathogens 868 are zoonotic in nature and that means 61% are of zoonotic nature zoonotic nature means that they are spread between the animals and humans and humans carry catch these pathogens from animals that may be uh, bovines cattle sheep goat uh, even dogs but they are zoonotic in nature of all that to human pathogens 1415 1415 868 of these diseases caused to the humans are due to animals uh, that means they are zoonotic in nature zoonosis is massively under reported most of the cases they do, do they don't go reported they cause significant mor morbidity and mortality and they impose a devil burden on animals and humans they pose potential for global spread for, uh, they control at source when feasible is highly effective if we control them at source it will be highly effective ancient diseases often eliminated in wealthy countries some of the diseases have uh, already been eliminated in some wealthier countries 88 80% originate as animal pathogens 71.8% of these originate from wildlife and at least 315 are carried by ungulates 80% agents of they are used as agents of bioterrorism for example anthrax bacilli bacillus anthracis that can be used as a war as a weapon in modern times 80% agents of bioterrorism and agroterrorism twice associated with emerging infectious disease than non zoonotic pathogens they help they affect the animal health and productivity they affect the international trade of livestock and their products one bill they cause 1 billion cases of human illness and millions of human deaths are every year due to the zoonotic pathogens and in terms of economic loss about 200 us billion dollars direct and indirect during a study between 2000 to 2010 as per the world bank top important priority of zoonosis 13 zoonosis they are gastrointestinal zoonosis for example due to salmonellosis leptospirosis cysticercosis zoonotic tuberculosis rabies leishmaniasis brucellosis echinococcosis toxoplasmosis kew fever trypanosomiasis anthrax and hepatitis e india ranks first among 20 countries in the global burden of diseases of zoonosis that is a study carried by out by international livestock research in shoot nairobi 2012 most common zoonoses of sheep and goat are in terms of viral there is rabies contagious ichthymid ichthyma that is also called as sore mouth vesicular stomatitis in terms of bacterial that the most dangerous and dreadful disease that is anthrax brucellosis leptospirosis listeriosis salmonellosis e coli chlamydiosis and campylobacteriosis in terms of rickettsia that is kew fever that is also called as coxillosis fungal mycosis and ringworm dermatomycosis phytosis or or mycosis protozoal cryptosporidiosis helminthes echinococcosis and in terms of arthropods we have scabies sarcopic mange and meiosis meiosis now what are the various broad effect of zoonosis they affect the human health that is they cause illness there is loss of time wastage of time long term illness and some in under extreme cases that can cause death and what they cause on animals they cause illness death and production loss in terms of financial burden they cause the loss loss in income they cause the the, the cost is incurred on the treatment that is disease costs trade loss when there is a, a spread of disease in some country or in some region the import export or from that region gets affected so the trade loss is affected and there is a reputation of loss also 
public health aspect is that is the food safety is affected when there is a zoonotic disease for example tuberculosis most of the people most of the meat we get from animals that becomes affected that becomes adulterated most of it is uh, that is uh, uh, that is a uh, discarded away uh, so it affects food safety and when there is not proper screening and surveillance of that disease of food it can be consumed and it can cause illness who can get sick people who live near or work with animals or their environments they are the most people vulnerable or prone to get sick to get affected who can get sick anyone with a weakened immune system most common uh, this uh, groups are children under age 5 pregnant women people over 50, 65 and people with long term illness for example aids cancers they have depressive immunity and they are also able prone to get more affected by the zoonotic disease people or animals must breathe people or animals must be how infection get get first there should be infection then to get that sick their infection should get entry into the body that can be get, get by, gotten by breathing in or touching or swallowing germs that cause zoonosis in order to get sick that means there should be the entry of pathogen into the host into the humans how do the pathogens get in the body they get in the openings in the skin bite or scratch for example if we have bite or scratch and we go to the animal having some disease having some disease <laughs> then that can be get affected that pathogen for example tb can get tb germ can get uh, tb mycoplasma can get entry through bite or scratch through needle pricks chapped broken skin or through mucous membranes of eyes nose mouth breathing in and swallowing what are the effects of zoonosis zoonosis can make us little sick or very sick sometimes there can immunity can be very strong there can be no infection or at all there can be mild infection moderate infection severe infection and sometimes death can also occur sometimes unrecognized infection when recognized infection means there can be slight some allergy slight some skin dermat uh, skin allergy or any other allergy and after some time it will recede away of its own and sometimes it will get recognized as infection a heavy infection and sometimes there will be uh, most of the time there will be reproductive problems long term chronic illness and disability More, uh, in many of the diseases for example brucellosis there can be orchids there can be reproductive problems there can be disability of maleness also sexual disability for example first of all there should be source that is animals where from the zoonotic germs come then there should be transmission that germs should get transmitted to the host and there should be entry from where the germs should enter the humans we have the three points where we can check the uh, these zoonotic diseases we can check at source we can check during transmission and we can check during entry these are the three blocking points where we can this block this zoonotic disease schematic diagram is actually related to that that we can avoid these at three points we can block these zoonotic disease at the source level transmission level and entry level the germs can come from the body fluids of the animals for example tissues skin surfaces bites scratches they can also come from the environment air surfaces equipment soil manure wild animals they can come from the food and water meat milk eggs water they can come from the insects and ticks mosquitoes flies and ticks they are used, they are the vectors they carry the diseases from animals they while sucking the blood or feeding on the animals they carry them with them the zoonotic pathogens and they all they can transmit them to the humans for example uh and from animals skin sores wool and hides urine fluid slime and kidding after birth from milk and the meat from cough sneeze saliva mucus and bites this is the animal environment where the animals are kept they can can uh, hor bar they can carry the zoonotic pathogens from food and water we can also get the zoonotic pathogens from insects and ticks which are the vectors 
India is one of the hot spot of zoonosis. Why? Because the area is very large. The area is 32 to lakh, 87,263 kilometers square kilometers. Coastal line is very long, 7,516 kilometers. We are sharing borders with seven countries almost. Tremendous diversity of climatic and physical conditions. There is a great diverse variety of fauna, over 92,037 species of fauna as per Zoological Survey of India. Demographic background is also very varied. There are one, there's a, India is a population to uh, host to 1.21 billion population with a density of 382 square kilometers. Point of concern is that India occupies 2.4% of the world's surface area. Yet it supports and sustains a whooping of 17.5% of the world's total population resides in India and more than 58% of the population relies on agriculture. Agriculture means agriculture and aid in which we become animals because most of the Indians practice agriculture system in which they practice, they rear the livestock with agriculture. So the effects of zoonosis, so the incidence of zoonosis in India is very much there. Zoonosis enigma in recent times in India, there's an outbreak of vibrant cholera in 1992 in West Bengal, plague in Maharashtra and Gujarat 1994, also in 2002 in Himachal Pradesh and 2004 in Uttarakhand. SARS, there was outbreak in 2003. Nifa virus, there was outbreak in 2001. And again in 2007 in West Bengal, Kante gave us a uh, uh, Congo uh, hemorrhagic fever. That outbreak was in 2011 in Gujarat. Lyme's disease outbreak was 2013 in Kerala. And these outbreaks, they are often coming and going and sporadic and endemic, that stuff. These are the brucellosis, tuberculosis, salmonellosis, leptospirosis, anthrax, campylobacteriosis. In terms of viral, there is rabies out uh, cases sometimes, Japanese and satellites, cancer, Tyson Wood forest disease, swine flu, bird flu, parasite in terms of parasitic, hydrated disease, toxocariasis, trichinosis, cysticercosis, phylorosis, trichinosis, amoebiosis, fungal candidiasis, ringworm. In terms of other diseases, Q fever, uh, listeriosis, toxoplasmosis, West Nile fever, botulinosis, E. coli infections, streptococcus, streptococcus, uh, glanders, these infections usually we get sometime or the other. Now, what are the main, some of them, uh, briefing some of the main diseases affecting these sheep and goats, which are very much of zoonotic nature. For example, one of the diseases is brucellosis. Brucellosis is considered as considered by the Food and Agricultural Organization, World Health Organization, and Office of the International Epizootics as the most widespread zoonosis in, in the world. It is an occupational zoonosis for farmers, veterinarians, and workers in meat industry. It is one of the leading causes of infection abortions. In bovines, the prevalence as per a global, in terms of global scenario, as per the International Livestock Research Institute, Nairobi, Kenya, the prevalence rate in bovine is 13%, in shorts is 13%, in camels is 7%, in uh, chickens, piggies, and dogs is 5%, livestock keepers, abattoir workers, it is uh, 11%, and in hospital patients, it is 7%. And losses are 25% milk losses in terms of animals, and high rates of abortions in stillbirths, as we all know. British loss is an Indian scenario, Cattle, it is affected, uh, prevalence is 1.9%, buffalo 1.8%, sheep 3.6%, goat is 0.6%, humans is 0.5 to 41.25%. And humans plus animals is greater than 15%. But many officers as the seropositivity is 12.37%, but many inspectors 41.23%, you can see how much prevalent it is in the occupationally, in the uh, related uh, this person. Where they, where, whether they may be veterinary officers, they may be farmers, they may be shepherds, 
or there may be other uh, person associated with the animals. Veterinary NS factors is 41.223%. Veterinary assistance it is at the rate of 30.92%. Veterinary supervisors that have been detected at the rate of 6.18%. And group D employees of the departments of sheep husbandry or animal husbandry, which has been detected up to the level of 6.18% in shepherds, 2.06%. Slaughter, slaughters, that means butchers, it has, been, it has been detected at the level of 1.03%. The study has been carried in a group of 618 people in 2007. In India, Bruce losses cost is rupees 350 million in the form of food animals and man days of labor. Human Bruce losses causing physical incapacity and 3 million man days of labor annually. Loss of 3 million man days of labor annually. Q fever. The, it is an intracellular, it is another uh, zoonotic disease of dangerous nature. It is the bacterium is intracellular, small gram negative. Generation time is 20 to 45 hours. It is an oblig, uh, oblig, uh, obligate nature of, uh, it requires translocate bacterial effector protein into host cells, classified as rickett cells order. And it belongs to the gamma subdivision of proteobacteria with general ligonella, Faisala, and Ketsala. It is a highly infectious category B agent, the most day contagious disease. It is also used as a potent bioterrorism weapon. It has a global distribution except in New Zealand. It is endemic in 50, greater than 51 countries and five continents. Rarely reported as it remains largely a neglected zoonosis. It is ranked one among the 13 global priority zoonosis. Notably, bacterial zoonosis, it is an occupational football zoonosis, and it causes high mortality, 1 to 11% in chronic cases. Recent outbreak has been in Netherlands in 2007 to 12. It is implicated, and it, it was implicated in more than 4,000 human cases there. And it was, uh, the government was forced to call more than 58,150 small remnants. It is an OIE notifiable disease as per the American Veterinary Medical Association. Intrauterine infection in animals causing one of the most significant public health problems. It causes high morbidity and a mortality in pregnancy. It causes abortions and unpredictable infection. It causes sporadic and unexpected outbreaks. It can also cause subclinical mastitis and it can affect bulk milk tag samples up to 92% while caught contaminated in the US as per the survey. Common sources is domestic ruminants. It can be excreted by placental membranes of infected animals that can carry 10 to the power 9 organisms per gram of tissue. Comparable numbers of any large numbers of coxilla are also excreted during the birth of live kids. It is independent of abortion history. It has also been detected in feces, vaginal mucus, and milk of infected ruminants. What are the risk factors? Animal related factors are direct contact of animals, sometimes handling abortion cases or placenta, assisting in calming or lambing, and it can also be contracted through milking, shoveling of manure, feeding of animals, petting of animals, or having pets in form. From the environment, it can get, uh, affect, it can be contracted to visit to barns and endemic areas. It is also regarded as an occupational hazard to farmers and veterinarians. Food is, it can be contracted to foods unpasteurized milk and cheese. It can be contracted, to, uh, it is more common in small barns and poor, poor ventilation, confined conditions and environments that facilitate infection. Some of the high business groups are Smoking that causes inhalation of the pathogen because it, smoking has already impaired the pulmonary host defenses. Contaminated hands, touching cigarettes, food ingestion of pathogen, drinking alcohol, liver complications. They are these people which have liver complications, which are smokers, which drink alcohol. They are more prone to get the infection. Another uh, zoonotic potential Zoonotic bacteria of uh, another bacteria of zoonotic, uh, highly zoonotic potential affecting these, uh, these sheep and goats is Listeria, which is a gram positive, non sporulating rod. First species is human listeriosis, 
For example, Listeria monocytogenesis. It accounts of 98% of the human cases. They are due to Listeria monocytogenesis, which is a pathogen or affecting animals, affecting sheep and goat. It is identifiable as a human pathogen. It was identified as human pathogen in 1929. But they have organized it in 1986 again by WHO. It is a foodborne transmission, appears to be the major means of zoonotic transmission. Listeria monocytogenesis, in 85% of the animal cases, it is implicated. Disease in animals arises mainly from ingestion of contaminated food and water, particularly common in ruminants fed on silage. Sometimes it is also referred to as silage disease. Wide, it has a wide host range. It is, it is a host of 40 mammals, 20 birds, crustaceans, ticks, flies, and fishes. Overall mortality can range as high as 30%, as per the OIE, Office of the International Physics 2008 data. What are the population, most population at risk? Impaired cell mediated immunity, these populations are more risk, risky to the listeria. Infants less than one month old, pregnant women, adults greater than 60% old, 60 years old, having malignancy, hematologic malignancies, HIV patients, organ transplantation response, and corticosteroid therapy response. As we all know that corticosteroid depresses the immunity. So corticosteroid patients which are on corticosteroid therapy, they are having depressive immunity so they can easily catch the zoonotic diseases, especially the listeria. In your scenario, first case was reported in 1935 in sheep from Hyderabad. And listeria monocytogenesis species was first isolated in 1950 in Madras in infected sheep. In 1966, first isolation of listeria monocytogenesis was isolated from the cervix of women with poor obstetrical history. That means it was first isolated from the obstetrical human obstetrical case in 1966. From goats, it has been isolated from uh, 1960. And pigs, are these by the scientists, 1985. In chicken, 1967. In buffalo, 1978. And in infertile cow, 1985. Human listeriosis, what is the scenario of human listeriosis in India? Due to poor obstetric history, it has been detected by Krishna and co-workers, Gupta, Kaur, and meningites. It causes meningites in humans by these uh, findings by these scientists. From time to time, it can cause perinephric abscess finding by this scientist in 1998. It can cause neonatal listeriosis. Neonatal, for example, it can be contracted at the neonatal stage at birth, finding by the scientist Thomas Gupta in 1997. It can cause pericarditis in humans, finding by Rivati in 1995. Animal listeriosis, in scenario in India, it has caused miscarriages, sheep, goat, and cattle. Bovine reproductive disorders, subclinical mastitis is causes, and it also causes fatal neurological disease in pigs. Another important zoonotic disease of small rumens, sheep goats, is leptospirosis. Disease is uh, contracted from infected rats' urine or contaminated water courses, contaminated waters. Population at high risk is rural farm workers, rice field workers, fishermen, sugarcane cutters, cattle farmers, slaughterhouse workers, and sewer workers, as per the CDC, Center for Disease Control. Economic impact is, that is the cost incurred on medical treatment, decrease in productivity, milk yield, impact on trade of animals, semen losses by reproductive failures. Indian scenario is, in Andaman and Nicobar, 50 at the, uh, 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 per one lakh, mortality 21%. In Chennai, 10.5 cases per lakh. And in Kerala, 5.6 cases per lakh. And mortality 10.1 mortality out of one lakh. Another uh, zoonotic disease of a most significance is 
and pets. It's the most zoonotic, dangerous zoonotic disease. It has been often uh, rumored to be used as a bioterrorism. So it has uh, sometimes it is also rumored that some tribe, uh, some countries of the world are amass massing these uh, pathogens of anthrax to use them as a war weapon in the future. When anthrax total cases documented till 2005, 205, cutaneous form most common, 90, greater than 95. There are two forms of the cases, cutaneous form and inhalation form. Cutaneous form affects the skin, inhalation form affects the lungs of humans. Many sporadic cases, 1970 in Kashmir and Bihar, there has been case, detected cases. 1980 to 90s, North Arcot, Tamil Nadu, and parts of uh, Kerala, Karnataka. Majority of the cases in tri junctional zone, that is southwest Andhra Pradesh, southeast Karnataka, Kerala, and northern Tamil Nadu. Endemics in this long, Andhra Pradesh, it has been endemic in Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. And it has been emerging in Andhra Pradesh, Pondicherry, Orissa, and West Bengal. Epizootology is not yet well understood. Reported from most of the states, endemic in Tamil Nadu, that animal anthrax. This was human anthrax, is animal anthrax. Endemic in Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, and West Bengal. Incidence from 1981 to 1994 is 1.5 to 9.4 million of population among cattle, sheep, goat, and buffaloes. Deaths and 479 deaths of cattle in cattle three years. This is emerging. Emergence is linked to linked to a vulture decline because vultures used to feed on these dead animals. When there have been decline in vultures, so the dead and decomposing carcasses continue to remain, and they are a source of anthrax bacilli if the animal of the carcass has been affected due to anthrax. These are the findings of S. V. S. Malik, or 2008, a very reputed. A public health, a uh, very really reputed scientist of India working in uh, IVRI. He is a scientist of public health, but maybe public health. And tax in West Midnapur, these are some photographs of humans having contracted the cutaneous form of anthrax, how it affects the humans. It causes some uh, carbuncles on the uh, skin. And in animals, how it, what are the, what is the shape of the dead animals? There is a bloat. There is uh, this uh, bleeding from this, uh, this anus. The blood oozing from anthrax does not clot. Tuberculosis. One of the, another disease of uh, this zoonotic nature affecting this sheep and goat is go, uh, uh, tuberculosis. Globally, 9 million TB cases developed in 2013. Southeast Asia and Western Pacific regions accounted for 56% of the cases. India highest TB cases 24% followed by 11% in China. Some of the countries having uh, this top 10 countries having the highest TB cases as we already have some information as we already know that TB is highly rampant in India and government is taking every effort to eradicate this disease. On the top, all over the world, it is India which is leading in the TV. After India, the other countries lagging or marching behind are China, Nigeria, Pakistan, Indonesia, South Africa, Bangladesh, Philippines, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Ethiopia. This is the source of World Health Organization as per 2014 data of Global Tuberculosis Report. Zoonotic tuberculosis. Primarily animal TB, mycobacterium bovis is the main cause of TB that is spreading to humans. But sometimes it spreads to cattle and sheep. From cattle, it spreads to sheep and goat, and then it spreads to humans from sheep and goat. It is more severe than mycobacterium tuberculosis. The actual tuberculosis bacilli in humans, this type of tuberculosis carried from animals, contracted from animals, is more severe than human TB which spreads from man, mainly from man to man. Mycobacterium bovis spreads in all four directions. It can spread from animal to man, man to man, man to animal, and animal to man, uh, 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 animal. It is multidirectional. 
While in case of multi-vector microbacterium tuberculosis, animals serve as dead end hosts. Microbacterium bovis is rather difficult to isolate and identify and needs more time, that is three to six weeks, compared to two to three weeks as compared to microbacterium tuberculosis to grow. Glycerol is used as in conventional media. No wonder zoonotic tuberculosis is undiagnosed and underreported. Microbacterium, it is a surprising fact that microbacterium bovis, which is the main cause of tuberculosis in India and uh, in the world and particularly in India, did not find even a mention in TB India Status Report 2014. They, that, was a, uh, that was a report mainly prepared by medicos and they uh, almost stressed on microbacterium tuberculosis. They didn't uh, emphasize they didn't pay much attention to these microbacterium bones. In a country with no TB control program for animals and having maximum animal heads in the world, uh, microbacterium TB, uh, bovis TB, or TB due to animals should have been given a special reference in this report prepared by the medicos in 2014. But uh, the role of animals was not highlighted so much and it was undermined and the bacteria causing. Bovine tuberculosis in India, prevalence of bovine tuberculosis in India, and 1.16% uh, cattle and 3.5% buffalo. About 10% cases of human TB are caused by microbacterium bovis. Urgently required is uh, delayed longitudinal studies on the population structure of microbacterium bovis, both from humans and animals. They are drug resistance profiling and identification of new mutated genes so as to address multi drug resistant issues in microbacterium bovis in India. Another dangerous disease affecting these humans, uh, affecting this, uh, this humans, this is zoonotic nature, and which is uh, of, of carried from animals, which can be transmitted from animals, is rabies. Globally, 61,000 human deaths are reported due to this disease, due to rabies. And it is a fatal zoonosis. Once there is this disease, the animal, the human has to die ultimately. There is no remedy once it contracts the disease. It means that mortality is 100% and fatality is 100%. Greater than 55,000 human deaths as per Garish 2014, Asia and Africa accounted for 30, greater than 30,000 and 23,000 deaths alone respectively. 90 and they accounted, Asia and Africa accounted for greater than 95% of the total world cases. Prevention and control costs cost about 590 US dollar million, million dollars annually. What is the impact of the disease? 36% of the global human rabies burden Greater than 90% of, of cases in developing nations are due to dog bites. Most of the cases are due to dog bites. Sometimes dog bites sheep and goat, and from sheep that goat, we can get that infection. But most of the common cause, the prime cause is the dog bite. Whether the dog bites someone is directly or the dog bites, because we already know that in a, in a flock of sheep or in a flock of goats, the dog bites and the dog attacks are most common. 38 million persons days lost annually due to animal bites and $25 million per annum or a year on post-exposure treatment costs on the injections, on the therapy of the rabies. Rabies should be declared as a notifiable disease in India, along with launching of an organized surveillance system for with for updated data. These are the references from where it has been collected. The flying mammals are reservoirs for more than 60 viruses that can affect the humans. And these rabies viruses also affected is also a reservoir for the, this, uh, this rabies virus. Flying foxes are also for a reservoir of this rabies virus along with other 60 viruses. Dennis roosting behavior of little bent winking bats facilitating virus transmission. This behavior of viruses which facilitates transmission. Another important disease of zoonotic importance of uh, affecting uh, due to contracted mostly from the sheep and goat. It is toxoplasmosis. 
in humans it is asymptomatic flu it causes flu like symptoms congenital abortion fetal deaths hydrocephalus convulsion cerebral calcification mental retardation this can occur in animals in first trimester 13% congenital infections but severity is 80% in second trimester 29% congenital infection but severity is 30% and likewise 33rd trimester 50% congenital infection and severity is but 70 is 70 to 90% post natal incubation period is 1 to 2 weeks it can cause lymphadenitis fever malice fatigue muscle pain sore throat and headache encephalitis in aids patients in aids patients it can also cause encephalitis in a case study 33% of the women of low sum a low income low social group lower income group and 22% of the women of high social group were detected sero positive for toxoplasma specific igg antibodies sero prevalence of toxoplasma gondii one of the common species is 44.6% and 36.8% in pregnant women with and without history of pregnancy disease respectively Another important virus affecting sheep and goats, which is zoonotic in nature, is Rift Valley fever, as an acute disease of domestic ruminants caused by mosquito-borne virus, Guinea virus, characterized by liver disease, and it also causes bleeding disorders and frequent abortions in animals. Infection can cause severe disease in both animals and humans, with many deaths. Large outbreaks have been found in animals, especially after heavy rains. The disease is typically distributed. along but not limited to the great rift valley it is mostly distributed along the rift valley along the tropical countries of africa like mozambique egypt lebanon etc these are the tropical countries but it has also been detected in another uh, 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 other countries apart from the rift valley countries transmission of rift valley fever spread among animals is through the bite of an infected mosquito especially eed aids mosquito other biting flies can act as a mechanical transmitter susceptible animals are as we are discussing that is sheep cattle goats and camels majority of the human infections result from direct or indirect contact with blood and organs of infected animals high risk groups are butchers veterinarians animal handlers herders and farmers humans can also be infected directly by infected mosquitoes skin cuts and inhalation typical presentation of rift valley fever in animals it is presented as incubation period varies from 1 to 6 days in animals the symptoms are fever low activity salivation diarrhea vomiting nasal discharge loss of appetite low milk yield mortality of 10 to 70% especially in cows outbreaks manifest as a wave of unexplained abortions in livestock when there is a heavy unexplained abortion in livestock it can be rift valley fever in humans the it uh, the manifestations are influenza like syndrome there is like influenza there is fever headache muscular pain comfort and fear of light that is hydrophobia recovery occurs within 4 to 7 days there can occur complications like eye complications bleeding disorders yellow eyes meningitis like illness and death how we can control this rift valley fever we can control in animals by mass vaccination in affected and neighboring areas restricting livestock movement may slow spread control of mosquito populations that is vector populations very burn and very dead and affected animals about about and their abortion products surveillance in animals also provides early warning for epidemic in humans in humans we can control by control of mosquitoes personal protective measures for high risk groups reducing consumption of raw blood milk or animal tissues in epizootic regions all animal products should be thoroughly cooked before eating and proper handling of specimen we should properly handle the specimen wearing protective clothing and protective gears etc when we are suspecting for this rift valley fever protecting against zoonosis no first of all i gave a brief introduction of zoonosis then i told some of the uh, important uh, indian scenario then i told some of the common disease zoonotic disease affecting cattle and sheep 
and their uh, reports as per, as per in the animals and humans by various studies and scientists. Now I will be briefly telling how we can protect against the zoonosis. As I already told that there are three points, three blockade where we can check the zoonosis. We can check at source. Source means from animals where from which we get. We can check at that point. We can, if so means we have to control the health of animals. If the animals are healthy, so we can have good health. There will be no zoonotic disease. If the animals are free of TB, we can also get a get rid of TB a lot because if we control the germs at the source level, if the animals are healthy, we are healthy. It is a concept, new concept of one health concept, global health of modern times that if we have to keep ourselves healthy, if we want to keep the humans healthy, we have to keep the healthy, we have to keep in mind the health of environment, the health of animals, the health of plants as well. Another point is transmission. We can control the transmission of the disease. Another point is personal entry. We can control the entry by personal protection. So these are the three points where we can stop zoos. At the entry level, we, we can, where, how we can stop the entry, we have to wash our hands after working in animals for about 20 seconds using soap and hot water. We should wear protective clothing. We should wear clean coveralls and boots. When needed, we should wear masks, goggles, and gloves. We should avoid exposure, cover open wounds. Be extra careful around animals if we have a weak immune system, if we are weak, if we are old, if we are having a chronic disease, etc. That is, comes under an entry that comes under personal protection. Another entry level we can check, we, we should cook food properly. We should wash hands often when preparing food, wash utensils, cutting boots, knives. Keep raw and cooked food separate. Cook foods to proper internal temperature using a meat thermometer. So you should fry and cook the foods, uh, meat, etc. foods in animal foods properly so that most of the pathogens or all the pathogens, they get killed. We should chill, do not thaw meat on the counter. Freeze or refrigerate food within uh, two hours. We should freeze or refrigerate the food within two hours. This also comes under the personal protection. Now, how we can check the second point, how we can check the transmission of zoonotic disease, that comes under biosecurity, that comes under the stopping germs from spreading. The various ways are keeping disease out, we should limit access, forum access, we should quarantine new animals, we should isolate sick animals, we should manage manure, remove manure from pens on a regular basis, we should control insects and ticks, keep animals indoors, do not let out water accumulate because that, uh, that harbors, vectors, mosquitoes. You should use insecticides. Another biosecurity measure is clean and disinfection, remove dirt and debris, soak water with hot water, detergent, wipe out superfluous area, rinse and dry. This we should carry regular disinfections, choose a disin cross suitable disinfectant, apply as directed, let disinfectant sit and rinse and dry. How we can uh, control at the source? We have to keep the animals healthy, as I already told you. We should, should stop the animals from getting sick. We should manage, uh, provide clean, dry housing, make sure animals have enough food, keep low stress. We should properly vaccinate the animals, work with your veterinarian to find out which vaccines are appropriate for your animals. We should prevent parasites, Keep animals free from parasites using medicines and posture management. Take a step in the right direction. Talk with your veterinarian about how to protect your animals and yourself. So we should stop. We can stop at three points at the source, at the transmission level, at the entry. Uh, uh, we should prevent these zoonotic diseases at these three levels. And the existing uh, surveillance system. In medical sector, there's integrated disease surveillance project. That is for the surveillance of zoonotic diseases. In veterinary sector, there has been national animal disease reporting system, national animal disease referral export system, all incidents of notifiable disease, animal disease control act 2009 in the process of collection of data, intersectoral calibration on zoonosis, national standing committee on zoonosis, 
initiative was by taken jointly by the icr and medical people icmr that has been icmr and icr task force on zoonoses icr and icmr joint collaboration task force on rickets sources disease surveillance alone by the icr institutes involved as is or icr national institute of veterinary epidemiology and disease informatics for epidemic diseases and icr based national institute of health and disease diagnostics for exotic diseases animal health diagnostics outreach program on zoonotic diseases with headquarters at iivri basic applied translational research on zoonotic infections at icr institutes Net one a national institute of zoonoses and by zegit national institute of zoonoses so this is has been like that, that has been and by zegit that has been and by zegit and it will have its headquarters in nagpur with have a country wide a satellite research centers 32 icmr and 50 icr labs high end research at nagpur while related projects will be conducted in satellite uh, centers national institute for zoonoses will bring together medical and veterinary scientists microbiologists ecologists epidemiologists statisticians economists and social scientists for excellence on zoonoses at mopsu maharashtra and animal and fishery science university at nagpur how we can prevent the zoonoses ultimately we should wash the our hands that's a short term wash by which we can remember eyes we should wash of your our hands often when animals we should keep animal areas and equipments clean we should avoid livestock or poultry if we have weak immune system we should avoid insects ticks and wildlife we should be safer wear protective clothing gloves cover all masks prepare and cook food safely we should keep ourselves and your our family healthy we should work with our veterinarian to keep animals healthy that is how we can also remain healthy Thank you very much.